Okay guys, welcome back to the Lawson de Laval build. It's been four years since I uh, made the last video on this. Goodness gracious, I've even uh, moved the shop in that time to a new location, got a bigger shop and so forth. So I'm getting back on the, the Lawson, the de Laval, the milking machine engine again. Uh, I just kept watching and watching and, and finally I found a donor engine that had the parts in it that I needed. So uh, here we go, back on it. Now four years ago, at the end of the last video, I mentioned that I was going to have this sleeved and I did. Four years ago I had it sleeved and uh, <laughs> it uh, it, it was reasonable. I mean, it was not a lot of money, but a job like that kind of adds a lot to the cost of one of these engines. These engines probably, you know, they're not the most desirable. I think it's kind of cool, but not a lot of people do. But anyway, it's got a new sleeve in it. Uh, a machinist uh, that did it uh, has done a lot of work for me in the past, and as he has since retired. I hate to see him go, but you know what? We're all getting older, and he wanted to enjoy life too, and he was six days a week, 12 hours a day in his machine shop, building engines and doing jobs like this, and, and uh, you know, I don't blame him a bit. Don't blame him a bit. But anyway, that's the uh, sleeve job. Here's the pair of cylinder heads, got an extra head. Here's the other block. The other block is serviceable. The bore in it is actually really good uh, but you know old old man frost old man winter takes his toll on these things can't tell it from the outside they've done an excellent job of repairing this but this whole side has been blown out on this one and uh, you can tell that by looking down inside and they did what they call stitch repair where they put bolts down in there and they stitched her back together with bolts and uh, let me get the light so you can see over here and it's just had the whole side blowed out of it uh, but uh, and this has been a long time ago that this happened because look at the scale build up there uh, that's in that on the side of that wall and uh, you know, so there's there's a eighth of an inch of scale right there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it's there. A lot of scale in this one. So anyway, this block is serviceable. This block will run. That board will clean right up. It's a lot better condition than what the other one was. Uh, that uh, the original engine. So that was the donor block. Back over here on the teardown bench, I have. Uh, Got everything apart. The only thing I got to get apart yet is one of these engines. This one here. Uh, the gears in the donor engine were very good, so I had some chipped teeth in the original engine. Uh, the carburetor on the donor engine is better. The valves, on the other hand, in the donor engine were terrible, so they can't be used. Look how look how pitted that dude is. And uh, the valves in the other original engine were good, so I'll just grind those. This is the original engine valve seats, and here is the donor valve seats. Take a look at that. It looks like the surface of the moon. So uh, anyway, uh, got that going. Uh, here is the new bearings. They were somewhat expensive. Your cup number, if you guys are doing one of these, is a 2720. These are Timpkins. Your bearing number is a 2786. And uh, of course it takes a pair of each. And uh, they uh, will press in here. Here is the original. Here is the donor. The bearings were bad in the donor engine as well. Terrible. Look at that. It looks like surface of the moon there as well. And uh, a little trick, I don't know if I showed you this on the other video or not, but anyway, you take a blind, I call this a blind hole where you can't really get behind that race, that cup, and push that cup out. 
But what you do is you go in there and you lay a bead of weld all the way around inside that cup. And that will actually, when that cools, that will shrink that cup down. And that cup will literally fall out of there or, you know, just take a light bump to get it out of there. And, uh, and uh, out they come. And then you can uh, get ready and press your new press your new cups in and, and you're good to go. So we'll be doing that here soon. And uh, here's the other gear. There's also, let me show you this. I didn't notice this before because it wasn't on there. There is a, uh, that's actually a quasi crankcase breather. Let's air out. Doesn't let it back in and creates a vacuum in the crankcase. It, uh, these things just have felt seals in them. And uh, you get a flashlight here. Sorry for the quick movement. That's all they are. And I'm going to see if I can find that felt and replace that. Looks like it's about a half inch wide. I don't know how thick it is, but it could be trimmed with a knife, I suppose. Or I may just fluff that up and use it, and if it leaks real bad, I'll deal with it later. But I've had this engine run, if you remember, and I don't remember it leaking. So, especially if the crankcase breather is in good condition, which this is just a washer. This has been, been repaired. It's not quite right. I don't know what the other one's got. Where's it at? Here it is. Here. See, it don't have one. Yeah. Uh, the stems there, but and the seats there, and uh, yeah. So oh, I haven't cleaned these parts up yet. I've got the the block clean, the bearing cap clean, and the oil pan clean. And I think I mentioned before that this had thrown a rod before and broke this little pan, and. Uh, I'll use the best one of those. They've both been broken. This little oil pump's probably a, the weak point and gives up and quits pumping oil in there and away goes the rod. But I've got two good pistons now. Got new rings. Um, the ring number, if you want to know that, is uh, Hastings 7896. So, Briggs, something in Wisconsin it says, huh, all right, rings are rings, I guess. So, that's the overview, we will get on it here. This is the donor flywheel, it is not pitted nearly as bad as the original, so guess what one of those I'm going to use, be this one here. The donor crank shaft does not did not have the flyweights on it. And then, then the guy I got it from at the swap mate told me he had cannibalized some parts out of it, but it had the parts I needed in it. And uh, there's the originals back here in the dark, and it's got the bolt-on. Uh, counterweights and it was it was fine its gear is good the gear on the donor is actually bad so we will be using this one I'll polish it up and use it and the other thing I was going to show you is I got a valve cover with it so that's uh, worth its weight in uh, something so anyway the other one didn't have a valve cover so that's cool so I think I've got everything to get it back together. And also, I'll show you later, i got a real nice original cooling tank with it and fuel tank. So we will get to those uh, uh, here after a bit as well. So anyway, we're getting back on the loss, and here we go. Let's get this thing together. Try to make some smoke. Okay, we got to put the cup in. I'll put it in this housing first. All I'm going to do is uh, get a start in there, just tap it in. And you can hear it when it 
hits home. And it's the same stick up all the way around. Seated it good in all four corners. And it is. And that's all there is to putting that one in. Okay, let's drive in the other one. Using a brass drift. Just working my way around it. There, there it hit home. There it hit home. Yep. When you get there, you can tell it just. Note changes. And make sure that it's sitting in there true. And it is. I just take one more time around just to make sure she's seated. I'm going to put it around the edge. Yep. Yep. You can just tell there's no movement. Yep. And yes. There it is. Looking good. And I didn't get it in backwards. Okay, I went ahead and pressed the bearings on and uh, on the crank and got the crank set up in here. And um, what I'm doing now is fitting the rod on the crank fit on this end cover here. Um, you uh, you put enough gaskets in here to give you end play, and um, you want these bearings to fit fairly tight, not have much slop. And I've got about probably four thousandths uh, end play on this which is fine for these roller bearings and now what I'm doing is uh, seating the, uh, the the rod and getting it shimmed up and um, getting ready to put in the uh, the carter pins to uh, to lock that in place and I've got this one done I gotta get this one what I've got to do is get a washer and put it underneath that nut and bring it up to where the castellations uh, uh, cover the hole here and that'll make the uh, the cotter pin hold the nut so and also the number of washers I use or shims underneath the nut determines the position of the castle so I can get the pin in there um, in the correct position without having the nut too tight or too loose So, I'm going to take this other nut off. I'm holding the bolt to keep it from falling out of the rod. I've got a washer here I'm going to put in. Also, the more you shim these nuts down, the more they dip into this tray and splash oil. So let's see where we're coming up here. Okay, that looks good. See if I can get that lined up about right here. I think I can get the cotter pin in it. Yes, there it goes. So that cotter pin's in. This one. almost in. It will be here in a second. As soon as I get it tapped home here, I'm going to get a little pair of pliers and turn it a little bit. Tap him home. 
We get a regular hammer for that. This body hammer will work. Now, I'm going to bend those up. This is going to be also part of the spice system where this reaches down into this cup right here. I'll show you that here in a little bit. Let me get these uh, cutter pins seat set here. Clip off the excess. Don't lose it in the engine. Like that. Let me show you a close up of that here. Okay, I just, uh, those just stick proud of that bolt just a little bit. This one here actually sticks up a little bit, and these will dip down in that oil and help sling some oil around in the crankcase and uh, help lube the engine. See if I can get you a shot of that. I'll get you a shot of that here in a second. I've gone ahead and see that my fingertips in here. I've gone ahead and put the lifters in and I don't want them to fall out. Uh, I will go ahead and put the cam in next and um, then I'll show you uh, the clearance in this tray here and we're also going to test this pump here's the original camshaft this lobe here is terrible I mean it was running it ran good the engine ran pretty good but uh, that was a not as good a cam as I got in the donor engine which looks really pretty good I think this is made to be flat like that for that uh, a little bit of duration there. So I'm going to use this cam. So here's a sequence of events. Small gear, this cam slips in here from this way. In like this. Small gear has to slip on first, then the larger gear. And I have to get the uh, Woodruff keys in here. And uh, the cam gear that mates with the crankshaft does not have any marks on it to time it that I can see. Matter of fact, yes it does. I just found it right there. So I'm going to line that up and I don't know if that's a top dead center or bottom dead center. So we'll figure that all out. Make sure our overlap is uh, correct on the valve timing, and uh, that should should time it. Here's the mark I just found. Let's see if I can get you to see that. Kind of looks like a maybe a circle or a C. If that's a circle, it's not completely stamped. Anyway, that's the only mark I see. I see there on that uh, gear. So we'll see where it lines up at. Looks like a C. See? Yeah, I put a little assembly lube here on this area here that goes into that bearing. 
Got my Woodruff keys in there. Slip fitted the gears, they seem good. So, small gear goes on first. Let me see if I can get him in there. Then the large gear. I'll put that where I can see that C mark. Put my Woodruff keys up. Put the key up in the gear, slip it on. that one. Get this one lined up here. There it goes. So there it's together. But I don't know if it's in time. So we will play with it here for a minute and I'll bring it back when I figure it out. Okay, I've got it figured out. I'm going to come in here and show you the marks. I'm going to sneak in here and let the camera focus. If you just peek right past the crank there, I get this light just right. You can see that timing mark with that tooth stuck in right close to it there. Right there. That is top dead center you look on the cam there it's overlap TDC overlap and that timing mark is aligned that's hard to see isn't it so let me get it turned around here sorry for the shaky camera there's actually on this end of the cam there's a nut that goes on there so I'm going to have to pull this cover this cover back off put the nut on the cam and tighten the nut and then I can put this cover back on and we should be golden now the other thing is in this hole right here is the push rod where the push rod goes for the oil pump and where my little finger is here it straddles the camshaft right down there it comes up through that hole and then when I put the cover on there's another extension goes on here that goes into the pump here. So that's all got to be coordinated and slipped together. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I've got to pull the gears back out of it anyway. And uh, I noticed some dirt on one of the gears I want to get cleaned up. And I want to pull the cam out and slip this into position so that it will be ready to go. And when I get the cam back in, this piece will drop down and straddle that cam. So I've got to take it apart, but I know where the marks are now and know how it goes together. So I'll bring you back when I get there. Okay, so I've got the pump push rod in there. And there's a little ledge in there that thing will set on. There it's off. And there, right, right there is a small ledge that I think that thing will set on. So I get the cam slipped in. I'm going to go ahead and line up the uh, timing mark in there on the crank and then slip the cam back in it again. Here we go. Okay, and here we are. We're back together. I'll show you this uh, pump push rod here. There it is setting in place. This sticks up here. Got a little assembly lube on it there. Got to lube the cam yet, but uh, and the the, uh, the marks are aligned again. So now I've got to pull this side cover off, put the nut on it. Okay, I'm gonna get set up here to test this oil pump. Let's put some oil in the thing here. Down in the pan. I need a little oil in there anyway. 
testing two things here. One, if the oil indicator is working. I'll show you that here in a second. Yeah, I believe it is going to work. She's floating in oil there, okay. And, uh, then let's see, I'm going to zoom you in here a little bit. Let's see if this pump will start working here. Oh, I hear it. Yep, here it comes. Yeah. So it doesn't take, the stroke on that thing is real small, about like that. And it's still trickling oil in there. So yeah. Okay. Of course, that'd be running pretty fast. So that'd be trickling quite a bit of oil in there, and uh, that works great. Let me show you this uh, gauge. Here's a close-up of the oil pump action, and then here's the gauge. Look here. It empties down there on the bottom. Of course, I don't have enough. Looks like it's going to take about. Uh, almost uh, another half inch or so in here to to get this thing up on full but it's just a cork that floats in there and uh, indicates the oil on that pointer pretty high tech for back in the day huh so anyway very cool now I gotta balance the act of getting this uh, engine turned over and set down on here getting that Placed. I'll probably have to get a mirror in there and see if it's uh, actually uh, in position.